Hello and welcome to 30 frames a second. That's right, today is Takeover Tuesday. Now don't worry, we have Nat in the back. He's safe and secure. 30 frames a second, here we go. Wait in the water Nat doesn't need a lot to drive him crazy. But honestly, when we get a chance, we drive him crazy. Today is Takeover Tuesday, and you were just listening to Jasmia Horn. Imagine if that was your teacher at five years old singing you that. What a voice. We opened with her because June is the African American Music Month, and what great music there has been here in New York, especially Harlem. Let me introduce my host. 
Next to me is Ms. Sheila Berry. She is the executive producer of the Gospel Showcase and also the executive producer of Community Cop, which will be on later. Welcome, Sheila. Next to her is Nikki, which needs no introduction. Nikki is just our overall person that's a life coach and just our network, I think, connector to reality and what's going on in the streets. Welcome, Nikki. We have a new guest today, Mia Dene. Yes. Did I say it right? Yes. 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 And Mia's um, new to our family here at Manhattan Neighborhood Network. She also has a show called Hey Mia. Mm -hmm. So right. um, we'll talk more about that later, and you have to make sure you tune in for that. We are so happy to have you here, Glad Mia. To be here. And the lady next to her needs no introduction, Veronica Kitt. Veronica has the VK report. She's also the founder, executive producer, I want to say owner, because one day it's going to make millions of dollars, the People's, of Film, the People's Film Festival. I claim it for you, my sister. Thank you. <laughs> um, and by the way, I'm Luciera. I often forget to introduce myself. I am a, a runway choreographer, actress, and model. And you are stay tuned. You are in tune today for Takeover Tuesday. We have allowed Nat to sit back and chill and run things, and we're going to run the show. Uh, first of all, great summer day here in New York. Yeah. Amazing, right? Mm -hmm. Yay! Mm -hmm. Love summertime. Our city, I think, is just awesome in the summer, especially it being June African American Music uh, Month. Has anyone gotten out to see any of the music or? have anything um, I noticed the BET Awards were on yeah any comments on the BET Awards uh, it was a little disappointing for me the best thing for me with the award show was uh, the new edition came out and escaped and for me everything else was kind of like blah Leslie Jones tried to hold it down what from what I saw I only saw a little bit of it um, so yeah I was just a little disappointed and I'm not really into the mumble rapping, so mm -hmm. Future and Migos. A lot of other people probably enjoyed that performance, but for me it wasn't like Do you anything. think it's moving, it's geared toward a younger audience, that that's what they're gearing it toward? Yes. Definitely, I think so. Or definitely the ones who are watching it. So maybe that's what it, you know, they moved towards. But it's like, what is it representing now? I'm glad you mentioned Future, because mm. what was he wearing with his daughter for the award, the mask. I don't know. Mm. There's this mask that he came out that was totally blinged out, mm -hmm. and he had his little daughter. The mask cost anywhere from, I think, between 25000 to three. Mm. Right, and it's something that was used during slavery to cover up the mouth and to gag the slaves. <gasps> and it's, to me, it's like the N-word where it's being used and you're trying to have like a new definition to it, but the meaning, mm -hmm. the hurtful meaning, mm -hmm. the core of what it stands for, still, it's still there no mm -hmm. matter what you, how you use the word. Mm -hmm. It's still offensive, at least for me. And just by him wearing this mask, I don't know if he knows the history behind the mask, if he's trying to change the history, history behind it, <laughs> but he and his little daughter was wearing it. She had a award. matching one on? She had one, well, she, it, was, it wasn't it was matching, but she too, he had one designed for her too, mm -hmm. and it was like blinged out, and he and his daughter, maybe throughout the show, Nat or someone in the back can pull it up so you guys and the viewers can see it. Oh, maybe not, but um, yeah. Oh, wow. The dress, yeah. is the, some of those outfits reveal too much skin. Most of the, uh, some of those women were mothers, and what kind of example are you setting for your children? What will they wear in the future? Dress like that. One lady, I don't know her name, I'm not too familiar with the new artists in uh, the secular field, but when she turned around, all of her skin from a Maximus was showing. That's disgraceful. And I think it's a slap in the face to black women. Um, I, I think we can no longer blame our young people when, if that's the example they're given, mm -hmm. they, they go by what they see. And if that's acceptable, and they're on the BET Awards. They're, they're not, you know, somewhere where I'm ashamed to be. They are where I hope to be, and mm -hmm. they are wearing these things. I, I myself, on every um, reality show, especially the finale shows for some reason, I just see women that are so trance I mean everything is just out there and then when I get young girls that I work with that walk the streets that way I, I see in their eyes that they're like but this is the example I'm given I think you're behind times right. mm. 
I don't know. For me, it was just a different type of black excellence. Like for me, I'm my definition of black excellence when it comes to like the BET Awards is like that Halle Berry, that you know, that grandness that they used to bring to the red carpet, and it's not like that anymore. Like it is about the social media. It is about the you know the Cardi B's the or the factor. yeah the shock factor. The shock factor gets rewarded. Yes, immensely. and what else can I do? Mm -hmm. Right. There, there's only so much you can do that's legal. <laughs> um, who was that that once said, "I don't know pornography, but I know when I see it." I don't know the definition, but I know when I see it. Right. Yeah. So that that's something that you know I I hope to one day really. Um, be able to look at the BET Awards again and be proud too. But I, I totally understand that red carpet glamour, that wow, mm -hmm. that old, yeah. I don't want to call it old Hollywood because it can be new New York. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be old Hollywood. Exactly. But just that, that classic where um, you leave something to the imagination. Something yes. is set for that. And when you see a lot of these young women that are on the, the come up, like the Cardi B, like the Jocelyn's, like this is what the, the, the TV and the social media are saturated with. The Kim Kardashians, the Kylie Jenners, they're seeing what's being rewarded. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's just like things that we would have been ashamed of before are glorified now, you know. My mother used to say back in the day, there's glory in their shame in their glory, there's glory in your shame either way, but it was just something that she used to say, there's glory in their shame. It's no longer anything shameful because it's now glorified and accept accepted. On that note, um, I was um, listening to a discussion between a father and a son and the music that his son was listening to that pertained to the N-word and him trying to explain to his son, um, how come there can be Caucasian people that you never hear, name a Caucasian song, that they are referring to themselves in a negative manner with a word. Can't that think of any. You can't. Mm -mm. But then we do it to ourselves. And is that something you want embedded in your brain? How is that uplifting you? Does it help you? and things of that nature. And um, how do you feel about the, the N-word? Use that any time. Use yeah. that any time. It, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that um, a lot of our young people really don't know the history, their history with using that word. Because if they did, I think um, they would probably uh, not use it. Or, and most importantly, they would not say, well, I'm trying to make it better. I'm trying to desensitize this word and so that people won't have that same uh, reaction. But I also blame our, ourselves for yeah. not passing yeah. that yeah. history down yeah. so that these young people will know not to do it. And that's the most important thing. I think a lot of us, we choose, well, our parents, our four, you know, ancestors, chose not to remember because it was so painful. painful. Mm -hmm. But in not remembering, we're now hurting. And so, yeah, you know, it, it, it's something. Because my granddaughter one day, ooh, I said it on air. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, she was used, using it, and we had a, a, a complete history lesson. She was, like, she was in shock because, you want to use that name? Mm -hmm. Guess what? These are what niggas are. Mm -hmm. And um, I think Eric Adams, he did a, a full uh, report on, but he, he said niggas spelled backwards is sagging of the pants, S-A-G-I-N-N. Mm. And so I thought it was just kind of interesting how he, you know, kind of like juxtaposed the two, but it's still derogatory in a sense, and it hurts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's move on. I was very excited to see Serena Williams cover um, with her pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Speaking um, of skin. I know. Amazing. And, and, but I, I saw that as beautiful. Mm -hmm. There's something in an art form, and I'm just really, really proud of her. She um, seems to be excited about being a mom. I'm happy for her to be a mom. I think she'll be a great. What? A, what imagine if she was your mom. It's either going to be really <laughs> good or really bad. <laughs> Again, and you better, or something of that nature. <laughs> Please don't let her hit you. <laughs> she's going to have an easy pregnancy because she's so active. Mm -hmm. But let me ask a question. So what is the difference? Because we look at her, there was a time in which women, pregnant women, would never expose themselves 
that way. And then yet, like you said, the BETs, the hip -hop, love and hip hops, the breast out. I mean, are we moving? Are we changing? Is the trends changing where it is accept acceptable to expose yourself? There's so many contradictions Hence. out here. It's just <laughs> so many contradictions because we pretend to be not a um, hypersexual um, society. When you watch TV, you listen to the radio, and you're just bombarded with explicit sexual things, yet to go in a convenience store, you know, my girlfriend was sharing with me, she went to the convenience store to purchase some condoms, and the looks that she were getting for being a, a woman online, get it buying condoms, and I'm just like, okay, but you're practicing safe, mm -hmm. safe sex. Mm -hmm. So why are you getting looks for that when, you know, sex is thrown all over the place? So it's such, contradictions out here okay is there a right way to do it is there a mm -hmm. wrong way to do it are we being accepting of it is there a more tasteful way of doing it personal for me I'm like preg it's such a sacred private thing that you know I know it's beauty and I know it's an art form but I don't think it's something that I would want to place on a cover for the world to see I just I want to keep that between my husband myself you know even if you're doing that it's just something that I would just want to keep private to to us. I don't know. I feel like, I mean, I don't have children, but I feel like in society, motherhood was looked at as something that was just placed in the household. Mm -hmm. And I feel like now motherhood is something that is accepted in all forms of like being a professional woman, being out, being about, being able to take care of your child and do many things. Right. So when I see like these women on the cover of magazines embracing their pregnancy, it like empowers me that like, oh yeah, I can be a mother and accomplish so many things. And the fact that they're putting black women on magazines is like a boost, another boost in itself for me to be like, wow, like this is, this is true beauty, this is nature in itself. So. so this is what I'm saying. With Serena Williams, it's beautiful. With Ciara, it was questionable because mm -hmm. she had her, her son involved with it and the way that they were posed. And then for Amber Rose, it's, it's, it's not empowerment when she goes and she lays her body out on a staircase mm. with mm. her <laughs> anatomy, the way that she wants to explain yeah, yeah. Her, her anatomy. Her, her TV show like, all together when she actually you know, had a show on said, be proud to be a hoe. Mm -hmm. And I want all the hoes to call in and we're going to have a whole march. Well, you got yeah. That's empowerment for, that you for see, the it's, it's, it's a thin line. For yeah. the because hoes? for us, what is empowerment for us it's different for them, so exactly, mm -hmm. they are different, as they say, levels. They are different <laughs> levels but is it okay? of empowerment. <laughs> and this is the she contradiction. Her mama, what she call mm -hmm. herself? Mother? She didn't say mother. mother. But it's M-U-V-A. Mother. M -U -V -A. M -U -V -A. mother. <laughs> Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna move on. I like her though. I like okay. her because she's not afraid to, you know, she be talking some Good. stuff. And it takes all kind to make the world Just go around. Just do it. It takes all kind to make the world go around. Um, now, <laughs> let's talk about something that um, is actually very controversial as well. The renaming of Harlem. The, first so of all, I'm, first of all, yeah. yes, first of all, I, I was asked a question by someone. Who exactly wants to rename Harlem? Because it's not Harlem Nights. Who, who exactly is it that wants to rename Harlem? The people that are coming from other countries that have moved into Harlem and they are not pleased. How do they say it? We're coming to teach the Negroes what to do. I don't believe that. No. I think no, I don't no. believe that. It's, it's, it's a developer coming it's, it's from other countries. It's, it's, no, it's, it's the developers. development trying mm -hmm. to make it more mm -hmm. marketable. It's, yeah. it's not it's the people coming in. It's making it more marketable. In, because exactly. actually the people who are coming in, yes, those people Harlem. that are foreigners, yes. they love what Harlem Harlem represents. That's, that's all exactly they love. why. In Paris and Italy, they're moving that's all into, they talk about. That's why they're moving mm -hmm. into the community yeah. to, you know, experience mm -hmm. that. But now they're trying to change again the narrative for everything. So I don't think it's them. It's the real estate. It's mm -hmm. the developers yeah, it is. Well, who are is. trying to make it more marketable. Who are trying Sorry. to up the prices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know. So once you rename, you can. Re revalue it. Yes. Yeah. Rename, revalue. But there's a peti there are petitions that are going around. Please, if you see one, sign it because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you do things. Uh, you, you can get your way if you participate in large numbers. Right. And if, there's an. I'm sorry. And if we don't do anything about it, the name will change. Mm -hmm. So we have to take a stand. 
I was out there. They had uh, two protests, uh, one recently, maybe about a week or half ago. Brian Benjamin, he's the New York State Senator, newly elect, uh, and in Harlem, and he's been doing a lot of uh, just bringing people together, talking about issues that are relative to our community. I actually just had a town hall meeting at the First Corinthians Church mm -hmm. and uh, with Brian Benjamin. Uh, so they were out there protesting uh, the name Soha. There's one real estate uh, realtor in particular on 115th Street. I think his name is Keller. Keller. And that real is called Soha outside. Right. It's next, on, to, oh, it's yeah. next to Row House. On that same exactly, and there's idea. a few other uh, businesses that have Soha there, south of Harlem. It's really unfortunate because when they, in, in, before all of this change came about, when people would come and visit, they say, "Oh, I love Harlem. I love the culture. Mm -hmm. I love the vibe." Mm -hmm. But yet now you hear the vibe is irritating. There was a time when you had the drummers in the park, and now that vibe irritated the people that was on 124th mm -hmm. Street in Mount Morris Park. Uh, they didn't want to hear the drums. But let me ask you: If it's called South so, of Harlem, then when does Harlem begin? Well, uh, supposedly See, 110. Th so they want 110 up to 125th Street to be that called South, South of Harlem. South of Harlem. No, that's yeah. the body of Harlem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That <laughs> that's Central me. Harlem in a sense, right? Right. Yeah, but they want because oh. it would affect your real estate prices. Okay. But then, who are you targeting? Because when you have a medium income of 27,000, maybe in Harlem. And yet the rent is two thousand dollars or twenty four hundred dollars per month. Who are you targeting? There you go. You just answered Who the question. Who do you want to move <laughs> into the Harlem there. and affect real estate? So these prices don't even reflect the community that is there and the people that are uh, trying to move in to afford these prices. I mean, it's just. Sad. I think we have to be realistic that New York is an island. There is no other land to build on unless we start building in Central Park. Mm -hmm. So if we acknowledge that fact, then people have to live in areas that they wouldn't have lived earlier. Well, we used to live in Seneca Village at one time in Central yeah. Park. But there is only <laughs> yeah, X Omaha, amount of space yeah. to live in. So the value of that property is going to keep going up and mm -hmm. going up and going up and going up. Um, every time a landlord moves someone in or moves someone out, excuse me, fixes it up yeah. a little bit, then he can raise the rent because there's only limited and... But my question is sometimes, it's like how far are black people, minorities, supposed to migrate? Because with gentrification, it feels like we're just keep getting pushed further and further away we from are. the city. So I'm like, where are we going to go next, Connecticut? Where are you going? New yeah. York is going to be a place, forgive me, and I, I hate the even thought of this, but it's going to be a place where people who work here don't live here. Mm -hmm. That's people are already across the river already. Yeah, mm -hmm. alive. Yeah, you can't so. live here. And and another thing on that line, um, it's and again this was told to me by someone who I admire. Um, if we open up one other business where people have jobs that can't afford to pay rent, we don't need those businesses anymore. Yes. Where if you get a job there, you still can't afford. We need jobs in our community that you can afford to pay the rent to live in the community. Okay, absolutely. So. And it's not fair to go into a, a, a neighborhood or a community and decide to change the name. Why? Leave the name alone. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to tell you something. Last month when they tore down Lennox Lounge, mm. oh I stood goodness. there and I, I mean, there were people crying yes. when they tore that down. Oh I that just so looked and went. I, it made me nervous for the Apollo. Mm -hmm. If you want to know the honest truth, it made me very nervous for the Apollo. Because what's next? And when you what's go down Because what's really left? What yeah. is really left? Traditionally, I used to love going down Harlem the vendors out on the streets. You, you can we had a candy pretty much man buy on our anything. Corner. Mm -hmm. We had a candy man amazing. on our store, yeah. on our corner. Mm -hmm. And then they pushed everyone into 125th Street Mart. And now mm -hmm. the Mart's been closed yes. forever. Yes. Mm -hmm. So where are they? Where is, where is, if they're saying they're coming for the culture, it's but, dwindling. I mean, yeah. or pretty much gone. But Look at the stores that are there. I don't They're think not, it's the people I mean, coming for the British culture Walker's that wants to change it. Stores and, yeah, but I don't you know, the food restaurant. It's mm -hmm. not happening. Being that I was born, you know, and majority of my life, everything was is Harlem. I still do a lot of stuff in Harlem. Do you notice when you go in other counties, let's not even leave New York, 
and you have, everyone have issues, we have a system of elimination. And you want to use the laboratory. Can you use it in Harlem? Yesterday I had a strange situation on West 125th Street. I went into Dan East. Yes, I'm talking about it. I think it's low. Dan East. See a D-A-N-I-C-E? That store that oh, sells Dan the cheap, low quality clothes. Mm -hmm. And I asked, of the, can I use the bathroom? Now some of the vendors said, go in there. Here I am, a senior citizen on a walker, dressed decent. I don't look like I'm going to knock someone over the head. They told me, we don't do this. And I said, it's a shame. When I get on television tomorrow, I'm going to talk about you mm -hmm. real bad. Right. Thank God for the woman in Ashley Stewart who felt sorry for me and said, hey, you can use this. Just don't tell anybody. And I was very grateful for that. But it's just shameful. You cannot even use a laboratory in all. So who wants to really shop there? Mm. So community is no longer community. That's what it seems like. It's, it, mm -hmm. As though there was a, you know how they say it takes a village to raise this family, mm -hmm. but also in terms of our communities, how we share cooperative economics, everyone is working together. When we look at the stores, it doesn't reflect you mm -hmm. and I. And so therefore, maybe they're not identifying with you, seeing you as their mother, sister, daughter, or just a woman, an elderly woman, as you said, that may need help. That help has shifted. And it doesn't include us. And so that, that's the unfortunate part about it that, you know, um, open up them doors. <laughs> Speaking of help, summer activities for young people. We are in the summer. Um, it's, it's wonderful outside. Kids in summer school, kids not wanting to go to summer school, camps, activities to keep kids safe, active, but also activities to help them move forward in whatever the next year, whether that be junior school, junior um, middle school to high school, high school to college. What are your thoughts on, on summer activities and key? Is it a time for just chilling? Let the kids rest during the year. They have so much going on. What do you mm. think about that? They definitely can't just chill. I'm tired. No. <laughs> you tired? I'm, I'm tired, tired but too. I can't tell my son that I'm mm -hmm. tired, you know. So he is at an age now where he's 12 mm -hmm. and, you know, he really doesn't want to be bothered with, you know, going to like um, a traditional camp. He wants something like that sports. Mm -hmm. um, a basketball camp right, or, or an right. a so sports that he's interested in. Basically, you know, as an entrepreneur, I have the flexibility like yesterday I had an event with hip hop against gun and gang violence nice concert at the iHeart Theater mm -hmm. end of year concert for those kids and you guys can follow us because they have a hundred and five they they're working with power 105 and they're having a hot 105 days of summer activities so go to their website it's at um www.hiphop no hhsyc.org and you can also find them on Instagram at HHSYC instead of NYC, SYC, HHSYC, Hip Hop Summit Youth Council. And follow them on Instagram. You'll see all the events being posted. They had a wonderful event. Um, kids came out. They annihilated the stage. They rose to the um, occasion. The staff at iHeart Theater Radio down there, their staff was top notch. Are some and of the activities free? They're free. Oh, great. Yes, they're free. They're great, free. Great. And in November, they're going to be, well, I'm kind of tipping the hat, but in November, they're going to be at the Coliseum, and it's going to be a Ooh. huge concert out there wow. at Nassau Coliseum. And we're hoping to bring those same events to Barclay and to Madison. So it's mm, a lot of nice. things going on but behind the scenes. What kind of scenes. activities? What are they doing with um, the... It's concerts. It's giveaways. It's just... Chi it's promoting right. um, against s summer safety. And mm -hmm. it's talking against gang violence, gun violence, wow. and the, the heroin epidemic. So mm -hmm. keep them busy. You know, so they're keeping them busy. <laughs> they're coming out. They're giving them, they're using art as a catalyst. Nice. So and they're using the art. So kids come, they perform spoken words. Mm -hmm. We had drummers there yesterday. We had wow. dancers. We had from six years old up to 
men who were in their forties who were in gangs and mm. lived that lifestyle, and now they're you know they they have rap that speaks out against it, and they're saying we live the life, mm -hmm. so now we can come out and talk to these young men, talk to these young ladies about you know life after gang. That's, That's always important point. because I believe young people want people talking to them that have experienced mm -hmm. things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think young people are kind of fed up with, well, I never did it, but this is what mm -hmm. I think you should do. Mm -hmm. It's, mm -hmm. um, I think it's important that those of us who've lived through things, whatever that may be, drug addiction, alcoholism, um, sexual abuse, anything, to get out there and um, if you're not helping someone, you're wasting a life story. That's Absolutely. the way I like to, um, to look at it and do that. I myself went to summer school every summer, but that's because I kind of love school and, and things like that. Um, I found it very beneficial to do that. It just helped me with my education, but there are some great camps up there. Um, oh, I'm yeah. helping some people go to Bible camp through my church, Good. which is also fun, mm -hmm. and it's not a traditional one. They d have dances at night. Oh, no, with I clean went to Bible camp music. growing up. Oh. You did, Veronica. I did. Do tell. I did. I loved it. We, because um, I lived in Queens, and um, yeah, it was, it was pretty, you know what it is? Everyone coming together, all of your friends, everybody mm -hmm. there, and uh, you know, just establishing, building that com camaraderie, something that you probably never have. And when you go away, you take away that experience, but you also have this new uh, shared sisterhood, mm -hmm. brotherhood that's like, um, it goes on for l forever, for life. And my son went to Camp Menacing. He yeah, went in, you know, young, mm -hmm. I think he was 11 years old, and or 12 12 and by the time he when they came home he matured mm. like within that two weeks i think maybe a month or so but he matured because mm -hmm. they taught him how to become a young man mm -hmm. he says mom they call me big man you know because a little <laughs> stocky little but the experience was amazing for him for my son's camp menacing right there in Harlem. so and they've been around and they have the fraternity the feathering and so it's like um powerful camp. So I, I encourage people to put their kids in, you know, good summer camps. I, I went to, um, as old as I am, yes, I went to Canaan Baptist Church Summer Bible School and we went on trips and we learned so many Bible stories. They stick to me up to now. The teachers, mm -hmm. what they taught, they fed us well. Of course, they fed us well. And we went to many trips and we had so much fun. At that time, Canaan Baptist Church was on West 118th Street. That big church is still there, but Canaan moved to 116th Street. And they had Bible school back in the day too. And during the summer, we even gave something, I don't know whether you young people heard of Tom Thumb Weddings. That was one of the closing activities before we go back to school. Mm -hmm. And just the fellowship with so many children from different churches getting together and having so much fun together. And I can honestly say, looking back on that part of the summer, we never fought each other or argued and carried on. Yeah, it was a bunch of love that I remembered at Canaan going to summer Bible school. I think one of the things we promote here and we talk about the most often is memory making. Mm -hmm. That all of our lives are actually composed of just memories hooked mm -hmm. together. And it's up to parents, it's up mm -hmm. to mentors, it's up to leaders mm -hmm. to give those activities that can make those yeah. memories. Yeah. I myself am learning to live in the moment. I'm so busy thinking about what I have to do next and what I have to do next that I often forget this is a beautiful day. You know, if I'm, wow. if I'm waiting in a lobby for someone to pick me up in Costa Rica, I can actually sit outside and just watch the trees and the birds and things like that. So we just want to really promote here um, today that you really try to form those memories um, with people, so uh, young people especially, because those are the things they'll look back on as they get older and it helps form the character they may have. Um, just to hit on a note, we want to say congratulations to you mm -hmm. for a successful yes. People's Film yes. Festival. Yes. It was <laughs> off the chain. It was. It, it was. was so different and it's growing. Mm -hmm. I love the awards you gave. Um, yes. That has never been done. You just take it to a whole new level. I think even today we talked about what we're going to do in two years. We're oh, going to yeah. claim it, right? Oh, yes. We're, we're going to do a kids, it. maybe, yes. in two years, having yes. a day where mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. under 17 
Um, we've even, I think, chosen our new host as she sits there and looks down like, you are not talking about me. <laughs> um, but we're going to be, so we're telling you yeah. right now, if you have a child out there who wants to pick up any type of device, you give us, uh, you give, excuse me, Veronica, <laughs> a year or two. Give us. Um, <laughs> and she will be having your son or daughter yeah. um, doing that. But just congratulations thank on the People's you. Film Festival. And I thank all of you. You, everyone here played a role. This was the lady in red. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. <laughs> and did she Everyone look was, well? Who yes. is this lady okay, I'm in sorry. red? I didn't mean to do and that. I kept getting tests. I'm like, lady in red. Oh, Mia. <laughs> Mia did her thing. Yes. You phenomenal. Yes. The spotlight yes. series yes. over there. I mean, you had a team going on because you would leave. You were inside, and, and was I was trying to tackle outside working tag it, team. Working it, working it. It was amazing. Just the whole. The goal was to make sure every day was. Yes, an and then Sheila an helping with the organization oh, yes, and sitting yes. there and she was making sure exactly. Absolutely. And I couldn't absolutely. do it without because this is this is my support. This is this my is backbone. a team. Can mm -hmm. I add on to that? Mm -hmm. Yes, I am being snooty and I'm enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> the film festival, the People's Film Festival, was much nicer than the BET Awards. Oh, yes, I said it. She it's said true. it. <laughs> And we had fashion on the runway, which is Oops. who is going to be bringing well, that. We decided we some, the next time yeah. we're going to start that out too, because I love the fashion that the young people are wearing, and it's like so we're leaders in all industry. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. the leaders, we're the new filmmakers and directors and producers and executive producers, but we're also going to tell uh, Seventh Avenue what's going to be next for them exactly. as well. So, right. but you know really something else with that, that with the people because. Uh, you can come dress if you want and wear your mm -hmm. gown or you can mm -hmm. come normal because we're people because it's people all, and so we all have our own little mm -hmm. sense of style sense mm -hmm. of style Expression. exactly you did have one who came um a producer from australia yes. mm -hmm. um and she had a film oh yeah and yes. she had on this gorgeous blue going. sequence mm -hmm. gown mm -hmm. and then with this red fur mm -hmm. <laughs> and um the first day she had on the champagne colored one yes. at the theater. Yes. We took some pictures yeah, yeah, with yeah. her, right? She and was, she posted she it to Instagram. Me. But I yeah. said, listen, if we had a best dress this year, you would have definitely I love taken it. But she, hands Nikki down. always wears her little jumpsuits. Absolutely. She rocks the jumpsuits with the blazers. <laughs> yeah. Because know you, do and, you, yeah. and exactly. be you. And Don't you were like a star child, box. Lou. You saw the beautiful yes, gown the colors, the necklaces. We shouldn't try to fit in anyone else's box and, and that's, that's what it is that's yeah. what the people's film away. festival exactly. is about i Our don't people. have to film the, the thing mm -hmm. you film mm -hmm. your story is not my story so your wardrobe is not my wardrobe thank you mm -hmm. thank exactly you. Thank thank you. You. the thing is the person in the jeans and t-shirt and pumps you don't feel a type of way when you see someone in their long sequence gown and their fur no. thrown up over their shoulder. Mm -hmm. You don't. Because mm -hmm. you know there's a pocket, there's a lane for everyone to fit in and for that's every type right. of expression. That's right. it's, exactly. And that's the beautiful yeah. thing And that's about the beautiful it. thing. Yes. Me and my Mashoot, I love him. Thank yeah. you, Mashoot. <laughs> Actually, I, have I get a lot of questions mm -hmm. about the fashion industry growing and the mm -hmm. two parts of the fashion industry that are growing are over 50, mm -hmm. that age group, um, mm -hmm. in all dynamics, print and runway, and full figure. Wow. The full figure arena, well, the stores, the catalog. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's stand. Ta da! <laughs> We've been here, thank you. <laughs> those are the two um, parts that are growing, yeah. Nice. That, well, I think that's the society everyone coming to accept. Everyone mm -hmm. for a chance. I'm very change. excited Once that in, you know. I'm going to be choreographing a very big fashion show for Ashley Stewart <gasps> nice. uh, this fall. I'm oh, really excited about yes. that, and they are going to have people such as In Vogue perform, wow. and we're expecting wow. other guests that I'm not allowed to talk about no. that I'm so excited. Yes. And when I choreographed BET Rip the Runway, Lovely. we had a okay. full figure section. And I remember, um, um, give me a minute, thinking of his name, but we had so many great performers just for our full-figured um, mm -hmm. women and how they enjoyed coming out and walking and things of that nature. So we just, again, like to promote, um, be happy with you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Be happy with you and all that. Now, be healthy. 
because we have to be healthy. Exactly. And speaking of that, I think Sheila wanted to um, hit on how to be healthier <laughs> this summer and things of, of that, how we can be healthier. Before I go into that, since you mentioned Ashley Stewart, this is an Ashley Stewart <laughs> new arrival. <laughs> she was on a roll today. Okay. <laughs> the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> now we are at the. <laughs> All right. How to be uh, how to be healthy? There's so many germs going around <laughs> during the summer. People are actually dying. If you can remember a couple of years ago, this virus was going around, especially in the Bronx. And we need to play our parts as individuals, as citizens of this great city, and do different things as far as being considerate of each other, such as natural practices. When you sneeze out in the street or anywhere, cover your mouth. When you cough, cover your mouth. If you don't have any papers, and you can walk past any hospital, and there's a hospital in every neighborhood, get you a couple of masks to go over your face. You know you have a cold. Why should you spread it? Because these germs are killing people, and yes, they go left and right. And when you're at the pool or the park, pick up behind yourself. D uh, take, a, take a private cup of something. If you have to s let your saliva out, Put it in that cup, this, cover it up so these germs won't spread. So these laboratories don't really know uh, exactly. They can't pinpoint it, so you take this, the thought of cleanliness is next to godliness, and this is what keeps you safe. That's right. uh, your dogs. I'm often missing clean up behind your dog. And truthfully, my little great-grandson have a dog. And he trained the dog how to use his wee-wee pads. And they have a special bathroom for, for dogs in an apartment house. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so if you take your dog in the street, have a pooper scooper. Could you picture yourself, your dog defecating, you walk past that, the sanitation was supposed to clean it up, and yet still, those germs are still there. You step in it. You may have carpet or wood. Here's a baby with a lollipop, and the lollipop hit the floor. Hello. You don't catch his hands enough. It's okay. You know what? There's some truth to what she's saying because um, I was watching I have a 60, one of those Dateline things, and they were talking about they did one of those UV lights mm -hmm. to show what type of Bacteria. Um, bacteria and traffic you bring in with your shoes and mm -hmm. I'm a stickler for that like mm -hmm. at the door mm -hmm. guests no guests mm -hmm. like yeah. take your shoes no out. people oh, take off their shoes I, at I my place I even wear too. like little socks or little flip just house shoes just solely for the house mm -hmm. and I'm constantly mopping because if I don't have something on my feet I feel like I don't know if it's mind over matter like underneath my foot like it's itching mm -hmm. So it, it's really good. You're tracking your shoes and what you're tracking in the house. There's a lot of bacteria, and then you get into your bed, and then you're taking that into your linens Ooh. with you. So mm -hmm. my mother was really kind gross. enough. I have a huge basket <laughs> when you first walk up that have socks. That I actually, if you want to put one on, you're more than welcome mm -hmm. to. And I have a piece of a carpet that you have to remove your shoes and things like that. And the basket started from having Bible talk in my church and the brother in my home and the Bible um, sometimes, especially the brothers, forgive me brothers, had holes in their socks and were kind of embarrassed <laughs> that a sister would be there. But I, I wanna hit I want to hit on another topic because our time is so short and I love being with you ladies so much. Amir, your, mm -hmm. your show deals a lot with entrepreneurship, young business people, mm -hmm. people in business, how to own businesses and things like that. Um, if you were to give some suggestions to anyone out there who's thinking, well, I got an idea. Mm -hmm. Should I try to make a business out of it or anything of that nature? What would you just tell them? What would you? Um, I mean, I think first and foremost, you have to understand what you're trying to create. You know, you really have to understand the product that you're trying to create or the service, and then also start researching the market. You know, where are you going to have this business? Are you going to do it online? Are you going to have a shop? Like, are you selling products? Are you selling services? Before you go any further, mm -hmm. is there one of those um, avenues that's better or moving 
or have more revenue? Is online something that's growing? Everyone's saying do something I mean, online. Online is definitely, you know, it for most companies. You know, retail is slowly declining because of not retail. I'm sorry, um, shopping, shopping mm -hmm. in stores is stores are being closed at a faster rate. Um, oh my God, what is this clothing line that just closed? Um, I can't think of the name right now. But they is it Michael Kors. No, it's female clothing line, very like clubby, young. I know Michael Kors. Uh, and BB. Like BB. Yes. BB, yes. BB Both just closed. That's so my favorite. Really? So yes. one of my favorites, yes. And they're mostly doing online. Okay. Um, big competitors like, you know, Zara and Forever 21. All these companies are online as well, mm -hmm. as well as having like physical stores. But they're humongous companies, so they can have physical. So stores. marketing, supply, where you're gonna, where you're gonna do your business. Definitely. Anything else? The um, financing. Mm -hmm. Is it wise to borrow? Is it better if you can to have your own and start out small? I've heard people say, well, if you borrow a million, ten percent, you owning ten percent of a million mm -hmm. is better than you owning a hundred percent of ten thousand dollars. What is wiser, or does it matter? I mean, it definitely matters. I feel like for you, you have to, again, do the research. Um, I'm not gonna say like what you should do when mm -hmm. it comes to like investing in your own company, if you should like get a loan or not get a loan, because some people are good at budgeting. Some people can save the money to put up front for their own company. Some people can't. Um, so for that, I, I would definitely say, you know, speak to a financial advisor about that. Um, but yeah, when it comes to like, creating business plan, make sure that you have the right paperwork, make sure that you, um, you know, license your your company, trademark your name, you know, things like that in the beginning that will help you in the long run so that you don't what have to What about trademarking, trademarking mm -hmm. your own name? Um, I think it depends, like if you, especially if you're like in the entertainment industry, like mm -hmm. what, what does your name signify? Is your name specifically your brand? Your brand, you know? okay. So I think that's a good question too. Like, am I gonna have multiple businesses based off of my name? Mm -hmm. Am I gonna be selling multiple things? And dream big, mm -hmm. dream big. And and the name of your show again is? It's called Hey Mia. Hey Mia, when does it come on? It comes on Sundays at 11 a.m. Sunday at 11 a.m., mm -hmm. great, yeah. great. You have to be sure you tune in for that. And Nikki, what's gonna be going on with you this summer? Are there any things we should be looking out for? Well, this summer, you know, I, I mentioned earlier, we have the organization that I'm working with, Hip Hop Against Gun and Gang Violence. They are actually partnering with iHeartRadio, um, Power 105, you'll hear the commercials going on all day, and they're just pretty much, um, advertising the events that's going to be going on and how they can participate. We're also looking for sponsors, so you know sponsors are welcome. It's it's a great organization and it's a great platform and it's about empowerment. It's about the youth. It's about keeping them safe. It's about us giving back to the community. It's about employment. It's about enrichment, um, and it's just a great platform. And we're hoping to take it you know, national and then international. So that's what I'm going to be. That's what that's my focus this summer. Hip hop against gun and gang violence and keeping our youth safe. And Sheila, uh, this summer, all you gospel music lovers, White Rock Baptist Church in Harlem on West 127th Street, their flyers that are being placed is presenting the Baptist House of Prayer Choir and many other groups in concert at their church on August 19th, 4 p.m. Bring your app, bring your shouting shoes, bring your appetite with you, and we're going to have a good time. And look out for the Gospel Showcase Choir. Our new release is coming out this summer. All right, <laughs> and Veronica? I just want everyone to those who haven't had a chance to come out to the People's Film Festival, they now will actually have a chance to see some of these films on television. So that is something that I'm working on and putting together a series of shows uh, for the People's Film Festival and uh, you'll have the opportunity to see them shortly. Hopefully we'll begin next month. 
Yay! And, uh, we got our wonderful host right here. Well, <laughs> if I don't get fired, no. chances are. <laughs> chances are, she's a tough boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. But that's what we're working on right now. Good. Good. And we want to encourage all the viewers out there as well. Manhattan Neighborhood Network is a wonderful jumping off place. Each of us mm -hmm. have come here and really learned a lot. I am so excited. I remember um, doing control room. And for those of you who may not know what a control room is, it is a room that has the switching cameras, the technology, the mics, and I literally don't know how to do anything on my computer but press reply. Okay, don't judge me, don't judge me. Uh, but I just wanna say that they taught me so much and that level of confidence goes up and you should really think about coming, those of you who are sitting there going, I could do a better job than they do, do it, do it, huh? Come here and do a show, we double dare you to come and do a show and it's fun activities and I don't know, do they still have the children here at Manhattan Neighborhood Network? I know they have the, the, yeah. the teens. They have it at the firehouse in mm -hmm. East Harlem on 104th mm -hmm. and I think like 3rd Avenue. Ooh, between yeah, third between 3rd and Lexington. Between 3rd yeah. and Lexington and then there's the the um, establishment here on 57th. Mm -hmm. So are we on 57th? 59th. 59th. I told you guys I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> here on 59th and it's a great it's a great platform. This is where I met each and every one of mm -hmm. you ladies coming mm -hmm. from a class, getting certified and sitting mm -hmm. down and watching the show mm -hmm. and engaging you guys. And that was, you know, that was it. Mm -hmm. It was history. Mm -hmm. But you know, the beautiful thing about all of this is that each of us can do everything. Mm -hmm. We can edit, we can direct, we can do floor, we can do control room. We can do camera. And we can do camera. And we can host. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. yes. That's yeah. empowerment. Yes, that's empowerment. That's and empowerment. You and that's the power that you've mm -hmm. received here. Mm -hmm. And so uh, basically, if you don't uh, like what you see on television or if you don't like how someone produces your show, do, you do it yourself. Do it yourself. And do on it. that note, like you said. <laughs> if you think we're a little too mushy or too soft because you're used to Nat with his <laughs> Cray cray, he'll be back, he'll be back. We honestly gave him enough water and oxygen that he's not gonna suffocate and or die. He will be back next week. We just wanna show the gentler, more kinder side of 30 frames a second, because we are the ladies in the control room when Nat is out here um, talking politics. Um, I don't think we need to talk politics. Everything going on with our right. new president mm -hmm is changing by the moment. The New York Times listing the lies mm. three days ago, a full page of all the lies <laughs> right. that oh were told. God. And is that okay? It's not gonna have an know. effect. Is oh he has God. his core followers that is just unfazed. Like we see, we see it, but his core following he just had like um, one of those rallies in Iowa, one of mm -hmm. those places, and they were there and you know, it, it, it stroked his ego. He needed that, you know, and he, he has his core following, and I don't think that's going to change. So good yeah. luck to the Times listening. I think um, by the next time we meet, and hopefully I, I think that day will be set probably in August, I, I can't even imagine what's going to happen between now and then. Things are just happening and revealing themselves like mm -hmm. a really, really bad onion. Yeah. That are just yeah. layers and layers and, la and layers <laughs> and layers. <laughs> I know come with me, I'm still going to be prospering. Yeah. We're yeah. all still going to be Put prospering. Dig your heels in, regardless. You know, what I say to my family and friends, come on, we went through civil rights, yes, we, we went through mm -hmm. slavery, mm -hmm. and throughout it all, we coming together as a community and finding that compassion for each other and just digging your heel mm -hmm. in the ground, in the sand, and just doing what you have to do. We will all be okay. Mm -hmm. We will be okay. Mm -hmm. We've been under worse administration. Mm -hmm. We've been under worse circumstances, situations, just as a people, as a nation, um, across the world. And one thing about humanity is we're resilient. Yes, yes. Yes. Very true. But I think also, like, we have to make sure that we're not comfortable with just being mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of... Say that again. We cannot mm -hmm. be comfortable with just being okay. That's right. right. You know, that's and I right. feel like that's what happened during the Obama administration. We were just so happy. We had a black man in yes, office. Yes, so for eight comfortable. years. And reality check came when uh, Trump got in office. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Reverse 
a lot of what Obama did. Yes, mm -hmm. they're trying. I think he trying. just wants to erase him from history. That they're but trying. They can't. They can't. They are. He would that. like yeah. to, but I mean, all of those executive orders. I and believe things. God no, but was in even that to to pass to try to pass a law that nobody has seen. That they won't let anyone see, but five or six senators. They finally released it. <laughs> Did you see those the um, people who were in wheelchairs, disabled on CNN, being dragged, who were out in the Capitol Hill, the offices protesting? But the mm -hmm. amount of people who are going to lose Medicaid and the people who are in homes million. that yeah. need, yeah. and I think it's I, and forgive me, Father, but I think it's somewhat ironic that these are a lot of the people that voted. Yeah, yeah that exactly. Those but they didn't are the know. Ones. Mm. They didn't know. But mm. to, uh, America things, great again. With that is reversing or going back to an era in which they thought was beautiful, but yes. yet they mm -hmm. didn't have mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So great was now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something was presented to me by a younger, much younger person, and she said that during her adult life, she's worked very hard, and she has sickness in her family, and this person have a lot of money, but the government is trying to take it all in order for her to survive. She's in a nursing home. If she get home care, they still take all of her money. They want her to sell her apartment back to the owners. She said, so what am I working for? For the government to take it all? I'd be better off having Medicare and Medicaid. This is what she said. And my answer was, it could have been the wrong answer, but I believe a sense of pride because no one is telling you what to do with your money and you're owning your own. They want a lot of people to be under because I believe Trump is trying to bring slavery back. Well, there is a slave-like mentality when you're on something yes. for generation and generation mm -hmm. and generation mm -hmm. because you choose to. You know, there are certain things that were um, and put in place to assist people to get on their feet As being abused. and things yeah. like that and when it becomes like well that's what I'm gonna do then that but I'm getting more the the question from young people why should I vote when the electoral oh, yeah, college yeah. is the one they're gonna go for my vote doesn't count and don't look mm -hmm. at me and tell me it does and yeah. it's so hard for me and I'm saying well you can't not vote but why should I you gotta mm -hmm. explain to me why should I yeah, because the popular vote is not one man one vote so let yeah. the let's let those whose vote count so vote you exactly and that's really hard for me to uh, mm -hmm. to sit down and try to explain but again I think Sheila hit on it that it's a sense of pride you have to take pride in yourself and decide these are things when I look in the mirror am I happy with myself mm -hmm. for me that's the definition of character what you do when nobody's looking that's right. What you do when nobody's looking? Well, it's time to say goodbye. I know. It's almost time for us to say goodbye. We hate that. The now hour goes it's so time quickly. To okay, say you're not allowed goodbye. to sing. <laughs> you're not allowed to sing, Veronica. Come she on, is sing. very talented. And, yes. But sing, we thank draw you. the line at singing. <laughs> Trust Come on, me. I'll help you. Come on, let's go. To babe. all, well, that was Mickey Mouse. Am I? But anyway. No, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. We want to say thank you <laughs> at 30 us. frames a second. We have enjoyed being with you we hope you've enjoyed it as well please come back because Nat has so much energy he has to give someone and if he doesn't give it to you he drives us crazy oh and Tony <laughs> <laughs> we're happy you joined us you were watching 30 frames a second uh, come back and see us soon enjoy the remainder of your summer ladies yes Hopefully I can catch up on That's some sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sleep is not going to happen. Okay, and that's a wrap.